Hey there, welcome back to another review, this time of the 2017 horror film, Tragedy Girls. Tragedy Girls, to me, is not a tragedy. It's a terrific film, and it's a movie that I was lucky to check out uh, for a horror blog that I'm volunteering for called, uh, it'll come to me, The Farsighted Blog. And I got the opportunity to check out a screener of it uh, before it came out in theaters, for a very limited release, which is really too bad because it honestly deserves a much wider release than it's getting. I mean, this is a shame. It really is. When you have a film like Tragedy Girls, which is genuinely unique, well, at least unique in comparison to a lot of other horror films that have come out in theaters and wide releases lately, like Wish Upon uh, or uh, the countless fucking sequels to uh, or spinoffs to Conjuring and Annabelle and all this other shit, um, or Jigsaw, what is it, like the ninth Saw film or something, was it the seventh one, or, or the eighth, uh, there's too many, or, or another Purge sequel, at least this isn't a sequel, this isn't a reboot, this isn't a remake, it's its own film, and it, it got a nothing release, it got nothing in terms of a release, in terms of like, Barely nobody could ever see this. Nobody had the chance to see this movie except for the bare minimum because uh, it didn't get a wide release, which is a shame. It really is because this is a good film. Hopefully it will end up uh, garnering a cult following when it comes out on home video because it definitely does deserve it. Now, Tragedy Girls is directed by Tyler McIntyre and this is one of the first films that he directed. I think it might be his directorial debut. And it is quite impressive. This is a guy who directs with a lot of verve and a lot of energy. And this is a kind of film that needed that kind of attitude. And uh, he really did a wonderful job directing this film. You could tell that he was passionate for the project. That definitely does show. And it goes a long way. This isn't a tired director. This isn't a director who doesn't know what he's doing combined with the fact that he's also not really that passionate about it. This isn't a guy who's just trying to do it for a buck. This is a guy who clearly has a passion for filmmaking. And I really am looking forward to whatever he's going to do next, because if it's anything like his work in this, it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to be quite impressive. Uh, it features a screenplay by Chris Lee Hill and Tyler McIntyre, I thought this script was really clever. I thought it was witty. It could have been wittier. That's one knock I have on it. Uh, not, one knock that I have for it is that it could have been funnier. Uh, I don't. I don't agree with some of the criticisms that I've heard about this film, where some critics are saying it's just lazy satire and so on and and so forth. I don't really think this is meant to be a straight-up satire of horror films to begin with. It's more of a satire of high school tropes, uh, like Heathers. So, I, I don't really see it as a straight-up horror satire to begin with. And it's moments when it does satirize horror conventions. I think it does a good job with that. But that being said, that's not the main point of the film. For me, I thought the point of the film was to make a entertaining movie... Uh, a fun horror comedy that's centered around two diabolical leads. Around this diabolical duo, Michaela and Sadie, played by Alexandra Ship and Brianna Hildebrand. That is the selling point of this film, is those two girls. And the film really, honestly, relies upon them heavily for its success and I feel it is an absolute knockout because of these two. These two are fantastic. They they are very charismatic and they are lovable despite the fact that they're doing all of these diabolical, disturbing, twisted things. They're the type of horror characters that you love to hate and they really do represent a lot of the different qualities that you see in these really uh, this twisted, disturbed, uh, you know, a sociopathic 
characters, which, you know, that actually, there's a lot of realism to that. Uh, when you look at some of the serial killers, like, for example, Ted Bundy, who was, notor who was notoriously actually a pretty good-looking guy, uh, so much so, in fact, that in uh, the 80s TV movie based on the Ted Bundy case, uh, the people who did that film, they cast Mark Harmon to play the role. And he was a sociopath, and he was extremely charismatic. Same thing goes for a Dahmer. He was a charismatic individual. A lot of these serial killers, and some of them are the stereotypical kind of not very charismatic or not, you know, this is the type of guy who you're like, that guy looks like a serial killer. But a lot of the time, there are a lot of serial killers who are not at all they don't even look they don't look what you think they look like and they act in such a charismatic way that you can understand why people are so easily manipulated and why people fall into their web and get caught in it and tragedy girls is a wonderful film that represents that type of personality the the that charismatic psychopath and you have not one but two of them in this film so, I don't know what my cat is doing. He's just freaking out a little bit. Apparently, he's excited about the film, too. I guess so. Uh, you know, he'll, he'll just provide some entertainment in the background while I, while, while I uh, record the rest of this review. So, the cast is full of some young, up-and-coming, really talented actors, uh, headed up by Alexandra Ship and Brianna Hildebrand. You might recognize Brianna Hildebrand uh, from Deadpool. She played Negasonic Teenage Warhead, and she's in rare form here uh, as Sadie Cunningham. I, I think she's a really talented actress, and I think she's a rising star along with Alexandra Ship. Josh Hutcherson is also, Hutcherson is also in this as Toby Mitchell, who is kind of this sort of boyfriend character who you think is going to end up being together with Sadie in the end and turn her back to the side of light, but then the film pulls a rug out from underneath you at the, in the climax in a rather shocking, surprising, and clever way. Uh, Craig Robinson, very talented comedian. He plays a guy named Big Al. He gets a big deaf scene that is uh, definitely pretty crazy uh, with some really big, grand, great practical effects. Uh, this film is full of that. Uh, this film has doesn't have that much CGI at all in it, except for a few things here and there. For the most part, though, it's all done practically, especially when it comes to the kills. So you, it's uh, got a lot of blood, and it's got some really impressive uh, practical makeup effects that was really nice to see. Uh, this is definitely on display in a particularly brutal shop class kill in the film. Uh, Kevin Durand is in this as Lowell, who is a serial killer that uh, the diabolical duo of Michaela and Sadie end up kidnapping and try to pick his brain and try to, you, you know, try to understand sort of the, his uh, ways because they're because he's a serial killer, and they want to be like him, and also they want to take him out because he's causing competition for them. Uh, and uh, he, he does a good job as well, as is Jack Quaid as uh, Jordan Welch. I believe, actually, Josh Hutcherson plays, is not really, he doesn't really play the boyfriend character. He just plays like a rant, a little, a little role as Toby Mitchell, who's this guy who is, was like a former flame for the character uh, of uh, Michaela Hooper, I believe. And uh, I believe it's Jack Quaid who plays Jordan Welch, who is this character who is more of a uh, love interest for uh, Sadie Cunningham's character. Um, I could be wrong, but I believe it is Jack Quaid who plays that character and not just Hutcherson, Josh Hutcherson. Um, and then you have a few other actors and actresses who rounded up the cast. But that's the main cast, and, and, and the majority of the film is centered around its two leads, the Tragedy Girls. And for good reason. Like I said, they're charismatic leads that are a lot of fun to watch. And they have great chemistry with one another. You can understand why they're best friends. And they want to become famous. And the way that they, on social media, and the way that they do that is to 
cause a killing spree. Uh, and uh, this film definitely did remind me of Heathers and other black comedies like that. And I love that because I love Heathers. I love that film. And it's really nice to see another film like that that has balls, that's actually taking chances and taking risks, especially in the horror genre. It's It was really refreshing to see a film like this in the horror genre because there's been so much stagnant unoriginality in the horror genre as of late. And when you, you have a film like Stephen King's It, which I know there are a lot of people who like it and that's fine, but that to me represents still represents the stagnant unoriginality in the horror genre. The fact that that's the highest grossing horror film of all time is kind of sad to me, but I'm not surprised. Um, this is that, you know, it had its moments. I personally feel tragedy girls is a much better film, a much better horror film, a much better film period. I thought it was more consistent. I thought it was a, a film that had better characters and it was a more fresh and innovative type of film. It was just another remake. And the horror genre has had far too many of those to date. So while it did some interesting things, it was still just another remake. At least Tragedy Girls was its own film. It was inspired by other certain conventions. It played around with sort of genre cliches. And yes... It does have cliches in it, but cliches by themselves are not a bad thing, especially when it's in a film like this, which, just like Heather's, is supposed to be cliched. I mean, that that's the thing that I think goes over some people's heads when they watch Heather's or watch a film like Tragedy Girls. They bemoan the cliches, but then don't realize that the film is intended to be cliched. There's, it's, it's done that way on purpose. So, other than the fact that it could be a bit funnier, although it did have some really nice uh, fun lines of dialogue, and there were plenty of moments where I did laugh, I did feel that it could have had some more laugh-out-loud moments. Hevers is definitely a funnier film, and definitely has a screenplay that is tighter when it comes to its humor, but I still felt The Tragedy Girl still had a really solid script regardless. Um, the, the only other problem I really have with the script is the climax. I felt it could have been bloodier. I felt it could have been even crazier. I felt the way that it ended was a bit of a letdown, even though it did do something I didn't expect it that I didn't expect. And it did take things into a direction that I appreciated a lot because I felt it was going to go into a cliched best friend faces off with best friend ending and it didn't actually go that way, which I really appreciated. But at the same time, I felt that these girls could have had one hell of a finale. And it should have been a just absolute insane killing spree in the end. And all we really had was something that was just kind of just just a little bit of a fire. And, and I felt that, it, you know, you definitely could have had more when it comes to that. And you had all these crazy stuff and... Uh, a, a decent body count at that time that's some nice practical gore effects and then you have the ending which just kind of felt a little bit of a cop out but not to the point where it pissed me off immensely but it was something that was a little bit of a letdown nonetheless it features a score by Russ Howard the third and I thought it was pretty effective a uh, nice sort of uh, retro new wave or new retro wave sort of score kind of synth music um, I like the music that they chose for the film as well, uh, in terms of the songs that they uh, chose for the soundtrack. Uh, the cinematography by Powell uh, Pogorescu, I can't say his name, Powell Pogostick, uh, Paolo Pogo Zerleski, I didn't say his name correctly, but uh, Powell did a really uh, great job, a uh, fantastic job with the cinematography. This film looks great. It doesn't really look like a low-budget movie, and that really says a lot. Uh, and I felt the editing by Martin Penza was excellent. Excellent editing. Um, this film has a really tight pace to it. It's 96 minutes. There really isn't a lot of moments where it drags or it slows down, at least not really for me personally. I thought it went by at a quick pace. 
And I love the way that the film is edited, especially in sequences where they're showing uh, the tragedy girls on their social media platforms on Twitter and Facebook, and they're updating things. And you get to see the Facebook profiles and the Twitter po profiles pop up on the screen, just like something you might see in VH1's pop-up video, if you remember that uh, a show. Um, showing my age there. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I just loved how they popped up on the screen. I thought that was really inventive and creative. And yeah, uh, I, I don't really want to give away that much about the film. This is a film that I want people to check out. It's a movie that I recommend. I recommend this film immensely. I cannot, re I cannot recommend a tragedy girls enough, especially for fans of the horror genre. Um, this is this. I personally feel this is a gem. This is a diamond in the rough. This is another example of an indie horror film that absolutely slays and absolutely kills it. It's an indie horror film that ends up being exactly what I'm looking for out of the horror genre over the past few years. Uh, yes, the indie horror genre and the the bulk of indie horror films. There are a lot of them that don't quite work. That don't quite click. But there's also a lot of them that are miles better than anything that has come out in the theater. And that says a lot. And I feel that films like Tragedy Girls and the filmmakers like Tyler McIntyre are the reason why the horror genre isn't completely dead yet. And uh, they're a reason why there is hope. There's light at the end of the tunnel for this genre. I just wish that there were more films like this that had a wide release in theaters because then maybe we would get more films like this in theaters instead of films that are just retreads and reheated leftovers from the 80s. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's really all I got to say about Tragedy Girls. I know it's not a very long review, but once again, I didn't want to go too in-depth. I didn't want to give that much away. I didn't want to talk that much about the plot. I want people to see it for themselves and not have it spoiled, although I did have a little minor spoilers here and there. But trust me, uh, it's a film that I definitely feel that you should, is, it's worth at least one watch, especially if you like the trailer and especially if you're a fan of films like Heathers and other black comedies like that, this is definitely a must see. But anyway, thanks for watching my review of Tragedy Girls. And as always, I will see you guys later. See ya.